for those who have not met me, and I'm the chair of the President's Advisory Committee on Equity and Inclusion, also known to many as PASB. So um, welcome to those who are joining us for the first time, and kudos to those who have joined us for, many, for any of our other sessions, um, especially if you were able to make all five of them, or six of them. Today is our final town hall forum. So just as a reminder, this session is going to be recorded to allow the Office of Equity and Inclusion to capture your questions and concerns and use this information to inform our work as we continue to implement the roadmaps, goals, and objectives. Uh, as always, we encourage you to ask your questions through the chat box, which is being monitored. During these interactive okay. sessions, our goal is for you to learn more about the college's equity and inclusion roadmap for success MC is committed to being an equity-minded and anti-racist institution. So by working together as a college community, we will continue to pursue equitable student outcomes, inclusive excellence in teaching and learning, and fair and inclusive employee experiences. Last Friday, our co-chairs for goal number four led us in a discussion on how the college community can assist with the implementation of helping to integrate relevant and equitable multicultural teaching practices. So if you missed that session, you can go ahead and find the recording on the Office of Equity and Inclusion's website. Mm -hmm. Today, we have our co-chairs, Mitch Chopin and Nancy Newton, along with their subcommittee team. So they mm -hmm. will be leading us in our discussion today. This subcommittee will be assisting the college in overseeing the implementation progress of goal number five and some of the objectives associated with it. So group five, the space is yours. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank Good you. afternoon, Thank everybody. You, I'm Nancy Newton. I am the Special Programs Director with Workforce Development Continuing Education. Woo -woo. And my co-chair is? Mitch Tropin. Um, I, uh, oh. <laughs> I teach communications and also English. At, uh, at Montgomery College, at the Como Park, and Germantown campuses. And we are proud to be the co-chairs of Goal 5 Subcommittee of um, the College's Equity and Inclusion Roadmap for Success 2020 to 2025. And Rachel mentioned what PACI stands for, but we're going to give you a quick quiz. What does the PACI stand for? Somebody apart from Sharon can um, <laughs> give us an answer, give us a shout out. And, and we grade on a curve. <laughs> President's Advisory Committee on Equity and Inclusion. Thank you so much. Yes, the President's Advisory Committee on Equity and Inclusion. And what's the purpose of PACI? We just heard it. Someone other than me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have Sharon? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, did somebody write in the chat? I didn't, oh, I, my chat disappeared. Anybody? Come on, don't be shy. Nope, there's somebody in the chat. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring the chat. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so the, the purpose is to be an advisory group to Dr. Pollard and to SALT on the areas of equity, inclusion, social justice, and diversity. And the, we are goal five subcommittee, and Mitch is going to take you through the objectives for our town hall today. So the objectives for this town hall... Uh, Okay, <laughs> we want to provide insight on in how the college will support diversity and inclusion in our, both for our staff, students, communities, but also communities that are outside the campus, such as the business populations, and provide increased opportunities for those communities that are outside the campuses to uh, become more part of our campuses, fostering equity, inclusion, and economic empowerment. And we also want to create greater awareness of the college's roadmap for success. So 
Uh, the Goal 5 uh, subcommittee members is Lisa Burrell, Dr. Deborah Bright, Brenda Christ, Melanie Ken Kendall, we all know Nancy, Eniola Oloofo, I'm sorry, I've been done the can. Oloofo Yaku. Thank you very much. Maurice Shahadi, and yours truly. So, show of hands, uh, raise your hand. How many of you have attended one of the town halls before today's final one? Elizabeth. Three people, raise your hand. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Excellent. So, some have, and the, it seems like there may be some that haven't. So, we just want to. Because this is the last one that we shall be going through, we just want to give you a quick recap on um, the other four goals of PACI. For so goal one, and the subcommittee are looking at improving persistence, retention, and completion, graduation, transfer of all students, particularly African American males and Latinx students. The subcommittee for goal two are looking at improving employee recruitment, hiring, onboarding, development, and training procedures and practices to attract and retain workforce that includes leaders, managers, faculty, and staff, reflective of the college's diverse student population. Goal three subcommittee are looking at fostering college culture of equity, inclusion, civility, accessibility, kindness, trust, and respect for human dignity through targeted programs, activities, and educational opportunities. And goal four are looking at integrating relevant and equitable multicultural teaching practices that infuse international multicultural awareness into the educational experience, classroom, and curriculum. So all of these um, Town halls have already taken place, but I do believe they were recorded. So um, I'm not sure if I'm speaking out of turn here, Jackie and Rachel and Sharon, but if people were interested in viewing them, would they be able to contact you to get a copy? Sorry, I was trying to take my mute off. Um, so they, the previous sessions were recorded, so they should be able to see some of them, if not on the, um, the website. Great. So then we move to our, we're here at our final town hall for goal five, which of course we save the best till last. And just a little bit of context for you. Um, this was derived from what we affectionately call PC 1.0, which happened during 2017 to 2019 and comes out of the subcommittee number eight, which was for workforce development and community engagement, business practices and procurement, which um, acknowledge the need for importance of diversity and inclusion in our faculty, staff, student, community and business populations, sought ways to work with the community and businesses to enhance our minority business partnerships, and served as a resource for a cadre of experts to conduct college-wide Sorry. College-wide training in response to equity and inclusion trends and current trends impacting our communities. And Mitch, you want to take us through what the purpose of Goal 5 is? You're on mute. <laughs> Okay, now I'm back in business. Yes, the objectives. Oh, sorry, come too far. <laughs> okay, the, we want to support diversity and inclusion for our staff, faculty, students, community, business populations, and provide increased opportunities for the college's communities to foster equity and economic empowerment. This means mobilize local and regional partnerships that effectively respond to labor market needs and to expand economic opportunity for students 
and, and for all county residents. Build and sustain academic industry and broad-based community partnerships that are key to advancing educational opportunities uh, for chronically underserved and under-engaged uh, populations. Deepen connections within, with the broader diverse communities through organized, strategic, and culturally responsible efforts. And finally, education and market uh, relevant skills are key to individual and county economic success. And we want to sort of make people more aware of that. So we, by creating awareness that of these various goals, that sort of goes hand in hand in creating a more welcoming environment for both individuals and for businesses. For example, we want to increase awareness of instructional opportunities for minority industry professionals um, found in professional organizations resulting in an increase in employment of minority industry professionals in both our regular classes and in workforce development. <laughs> so these objectives were taken from um, PACI 1.0 from what came out of the subcommittee and our subcommittee for goal five, we took the, um, uh, we looked at all the objectives that came out for every single area within um, the roadmap. And we, as a, we whittled them down to ones that we thought were our top priorities for our um, particular subcommittee for goal five. And so these are what we're taking you through now. So we have the objective that came from um, the roadmap, as you can see, and it's on page, you know, on the different pages. Most of these are on page 39 in the roadmap. Um, I will provide a link in the map to the roadmap so you can go in and see. Um, and then the examples are what we as a subcommittee, where we are right now with, um, you know, how do we ob obtain this objective? So um, the one that Mitch just talked about was the creating the awareness of MC's welcoming environment um, for individuals and businesses. And our example for what, how we, or what we are recommending is to, you know, increase this awareness for minority industry professionals, um, such as, um, you know, black engineers in education. Um, and then the second objective that we decided was to be a top priority for our group is to determine the viability of a minority and a women owned business vendor program through a disparity study. And we um, think our example is to ensure that this disparity study is analyzed and major findings uh, and progress are reported to the college community for transparency each fiscal year, resulting in a decreased disparity in the number of women and minority owned vendors throughout the college. It's all very well saying we're going to do it, but we need to have follow through. And that's one of the main tenants of, of our role as goal five and all the goals the subcommittees are to make these recommendations but then monitor um, to make sure the work is being done um, through our senior vice C senior vice president liaisons for, which for this particular group is deborah bright so um, all our suggestions that come out of the subcommittee dr bright will then take um, and we'll, we will disseminate them to the different SVP areas and make sure that they do the work that we told them that they need to do. So this is where you're in a little bit, we will break out and you will be able to help us to broaden what we've suggested um, and give us more ideas so we can then really make a difference. Um, let me just add, we, we really endeavored to have very specific examples, because I think that gives clarity to what the roadmap is trying to achieve. But that doesn't mean we're not open to other suggestions of specific examples of what could be done to help us achieve our priorities and goals under uh, for five. And I think it's, I would add 
to that, but it is essential that we have your feedback because we are a, a small group, but this affects the entire college community and the county community because we are looking at, you know, um, so many different areas, not just within the college. So our third priority is to encourage minority participation in the Germantown incubator. Now, quick stop, um, hands up if you even know or knew that Germantown had an incubator. <laughs> because only, I didn't. Only because I drove past it quite a lot <laughs> when I was teaching at Germantown. Oh, I'm glad that some of you do. All right, you're all showing me up now. Everybody's raising their hands that we knew that we had one. <laughs> well, that's great though, that we, we have a lot of people who knew, but we do have, we still have some who didn't know that we had one. I was one, um, I don't know, it's because I was in my, I should have known, I'm in workforce development, right? Um, but we want to encourage participation in this and one way um, that our subcommittee, uh, one of our recommendations is to create an awareness campaign of the Germantown incubator throughout the college um, and throughout the community to include WDCE and the business community, which will hopefully result in an increase in inquiries from women and minority owned small business owners and students. And then, and a, and a second recommendation was after we have this awareness campaign, then we you know, bring in these business, um, these minority owned small businesses um, to help them and to provide a space where they can grow um, and serve the college community and the Montgomery County community as well. Now, people have been asking and we, and Susan Madden sort of answered the question, the incubator is a county controlled as part, it's a county facility, but it is physically located on the Germantown campus. And we thought, why not take advantage of the fact of its proximity to uh, the Germantown you know, college campus, uh, even though it's not actually technically part of the Germantown campus. But also, you know, we could, we have one in Germantown. Why can't we also suggest that the county investing one in Rockville, investing one in Tacoma Park? Um, so these are suggestions and we want to receive all of your suggestions as we go into our breakouts as well. Mitch, you want to do this one? Okay. Um, which one? Oh, we've, we've, we've gone past the German encourage minority participation. I think we just did that. We go to the next slide. I have. We're on the. Can you see this college wide culture? Right now I can see it. Okay. We want to encourage college wide culture relative to inclusion and exception with intentional, purposeful programs and activities. For example, market and host daytime in class multicultural multi-ethnic speakers or performers to engage at all MC community, to engage all MC community members, which we would hope would, would result in an increase in exposure to individuals or groups from diverse backgrounds, tending uh, to expand, uh, expanded student employee awareness of social justice, equity, and inclusion. So I'm just gonna pause for a moment and take a look in the chat box, see if there's anything, um, any questions that came up. Carla mentioned about the incubator, the county controls it. Yes, Carla, I believe that they do, as Mitch said, they do, but um, you know, working together, collaboration, um, our recommendations, we could maybe see what Dave Sears and his team could do? It, it, I mean, right now, the, you know, we're still talking about the incubator. They really, I think the attitude is if they won't reach out to us, we will reach out to them. Right. And actually, I see that, yes, I see we have Margaret Latimer on. Um, and yeah, if, if I can chime in just yes, very please, briefly. Yes, please, please. <laughs> there, are, there are several county incubators. There's one in Rockville, there's one in Silver Spring, and each has a focus. 
The Rockville one tends to focus on IT, cybersecurity. The one in Germantown is the tech incubator. Um, there are 24 wet labs in the building. So biotech, life science kinds of things that need that kind of space. If when they apply for space in a county incubator, they would be directed there. There are some businesses also tech, including IT in that space as well. Um, so when you, when you approach the county with a business idea, depending on where you are, there's an application process, you need funding, um, they can connect you to those angel funders, those venture capitalists and that sort of thing. And then you apply for, and based on your um, proposal and um, what, the, what the level of competition is at the time, you are offered space um, at, a, at a much more affordable per square foot rental rate than if you simply went into the community looking for office or wet lab space. For instance, in, in biotech, the wet lab is, is obviously critical and it's expensive. So there is a system. And if you go to the county um, economic development uh, corporation site, um, I think you, you could probably, I, I've never done it. It might be interesting to see what happens if you said start a business in Montgomery County. It might be interesting to see where you land. But that's sort of how this process works, is somebody with an idea um, looks at what county resources are and then gets directed to one of these spaces based on the sector of the economy in which they are trying to develop a business. So, so do there, you want to there's, there's add anything central, to go, go ahead. I have a question, but go ahead. So, I want, so in other words, there is sort of a central office that can that has outreaches to all the various incubators. So that if we went to the central office, that would enable us to be able to reach out to the Silver Spring one for, for, the, for the Silver Spring Tacoma Park campus and the Rockville one. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and then, thank, you, thank you very much. This is really helpful information. <laughs> uh, no, I was so going to I, add, um, Margaret, that we <laughs> may not have wanted to speak up because you're now going to be on our list of people to contact. To <laughs> but we have had, we have had students do internships. We've had folks from the incubator speak. Mitch, you may remember one of the Athenaeum talks by Dr. Luis Branco, who is the one who developed the first rapid Ebola test back in the uh, mm -hmm. West Africa outbreak in 2016, I think that was. So there is interaction um, and, and PICMC is really trying to foster that. So um, one of the things I always have to remind myself is if you are trying to launch a business like that, you are working not 24 seven, but 38. Mm. Um, you are trying to cram an extra day into the week and extra hours into the day. So, but people have been gracious with their time when we've asked, um, so yeah, we do consider the facility a good partner. We had an ice cream social with them and that sort of thing every once in a while. We, we've, we've tried to engage them as a resource for our students and, and for faculty as well to be connected in um, what's going on um, in the very active and cutting edge world of research. I think I should explain for those who've never been to the Germantown campus, there is the campus that starts essentially well, there's a road that runs through the campus, Observation Drive. And if you go to the main entrance, you immediately see the college. But if you drive past the college, staying on Observation Drive, you then see Holy Cross on your left. And then at the bottom of a hill, it's sort of like tucked away is the incubator. And there's like just one little sign saying the Hercules Pickney Incubator. And for many of us, that's the only way we know there is such an incubator. It's not like they come and talk to us a lot. <laughs> so Nancy, can I, 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 I'm going to clarify something if, if I may, and this is a great opportunity to have this captive audience. Pick MC, the Pinckney Innovation Complex for Science and Technology at Montgomery College, named after Dr. Hercules Pinckney in, in honor of his work at the college, is the entire campus. When you drive onto the campus, whether it's from Route 118 or Middlebrook Road, you are at Pink MC, you are on the Germantown campus. Holy Cross Germantown Hospital is part of Pick MC. It is on the Germantown campus. Oh. The incubator is the second floor of the PK building. It is right upstairs from my office. 
If, if you're in yeah. PK, if, if you're in PK and go upstairs, that's where those kinds of things are, are happening. That's where that research is happening. Um, and, but, but the entire campus, is, and the goal of this campus of, of PICMC is to build out what space we have with companies on the campus so that students can have internships, part-time jobs. We can use perhaps employees from those companies to whether it's a guest lecture, a lunch and learn, um, adjunct faculty, our faculty, and again, with this focus on technology and STEM fields can have experiences perhaps part-time. You know, you can literally go over and do the hands-on work. You can interact with the people who are doing this work and that you bring that to your classroom. You, you've had that experience, students can have that experience. We, we're used to these kinds of innovation spaces with large research universities. Nobody bats an eye when that's linked to Ohio State or College Park or Stanford. We're doing it at a community college. And so the building, the next building, which we are hope goes up very, very quickly, is across the street from Holy Cross Germantown Hospital. And it will be on the campus. It will be part of PICMC. And, and what I am hoping, and I now have one, there are 59 participants in this meeting. There are 59 of you who know now, and I keep trying to say this when we have on-campus meetings, Germantown campus is synonymous with PICMC. I should be able to use either phrase, either expression, and everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about, and they're the same thing. Thank you so much for that. So are, you, started, are, you started with a quiz, Nancy. I want this to be part of your quiz at the absolutely. next meeting. <laughs> absolutely. We are in a, um, a campaign um, session. So it's about, thank you for campaigning. For thank, thank you for giving me the floor. <laughs> I, I would say I would, it. I would, I would, um, the, I'd like the, to just call on Susan Madden for a okay. second. Susan, you made a comment in the uh, chat. Oh, there you are. Sure. Hello. Thanks, Nancy. Hi, Mitchell. Hey, everybody else. It's good to see you. Hopefully the sun's coming out, or it was for a minute there today, um, and we can all go out and get some fresh air once we get off these Zoom things. Um, I think Margaret did a really good job, of course, of summarizing what happens on her own campus, so I don't want to take up much more time. I do want to say that, um, first of all, the county has their own e &I initiatives of their own accord. They adopted legislation last year. All their new initiatives, in addition to coming with what comes at fiscal note, how much a new idea or an operation costs, there has to be a racial equity note. They have to evaluate their work within that context. Um, so while the Germantown Innovation Center is very much an element of PICMC and is a significant partner in ours, in creating the synergy and all the opportunities we want to happen flowing in of the, out of their innovation and their research flowing into our classrooms. You know, the idea is bringing some of those folks into our classrooms to help do instruction in real life, what happens in their labs. And then for our students to be able to go um, and intern there, that was the, the idea behind it. Um, it was very much an initiative of the county for us to sort of go in this direction to, to, to come to the place where we are um, now pick MC. They, along with the state, um, provided some funds so that we actually bought extra ground next to the campus. And that, that 20 acres with uh, 20 acres we already owned sort of did the mashup of the first iteration of what pick MC was. And then the county wanted to develop a an incubator up county and then the building that uh, Margaret resides in became available and the county said why don't we buy it and we can put the incubator there instead of building you know yada 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 there lies the history so this is run and operated by the county and we can ask them for the demographics of the community that um, works and is doing their thing they are by nature small businesses. They're brand new. They're trying to emerge, um, become emerging companies. The goal is to move out of the innovation center. It's not to be a permanent place. My, the couple of times I've walked through the innovation center, it looks like a diverse folks, a, a group of folks, but it's been a long time since I've walked through and visited the, the, 
the tiny little office and tiny little labs they all have. Um, so um, that is something we can share with the county, but again, it's their place. So we just have to keep that in mind. Thank you so much, Susan. And we look forward to adding you to our list of resources. This is great. We're just getting people to do all the work for us. It's fantastic. <laughs> I see some people with their hands raised. Is that from previous or um, are people wanting to talk? Rose, was that from a previous, um, the, you know about the incubator? My audio. That, that was previous. Okay. When you asked for a call of hands. Okay. Yeah, I just want to add a little piece that there's a great meeting space in that golden building or the Paul Peck building on the second floor. And several times, MC Pride and Allies have held their annual meeting there. Um, and also the Global Humanities Institute has held several kind of culminating meetings there after the travel study trips. And we didn't think to invite people from the incubator. You know, we sort of reserve the space. So now I'm thinking that would be one thing that we could add to the conversation is when there are special events, especially with a diversity inclusion kind of theme, that we could do more outreach there. That's great, Laura. Um, and please mention that in your breakout session as well, um, so that the we have this recorded, but so that we can make sure we get it into the um, into our recommendations. Um, Carla, Sylvester, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, you made a suggestion in the chat to uh, look at our own minority procurement benchmarks. Do you want to add anything to that? I mean, if the goal is to have Montgomery College support more minority small businesses, that might be a place to go. I, I know we have some targets to meet. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we could be doing a better job of that. I don't know. I really don't know. But that's something that we control. Right. And please, uh, again, make that suggestion in your breakout group. We're going to be full of all these fantastic things. So, all right, so what we are going to do now is we are going to break out um, into different sessions. We will be breaking out for about 30 minutes. And what we want to do is have you engage in a guided discussion related to goal five. Um, and you will have, you have a scribe and a facilitator who's already been assigned, um, but that doesn't mean that that person reports out. So don't rely on them, um, but this is the <coughs> active participation, okay? And the questions, your um, facilitators have a list of the questions. Um, they are listed here. Mitch, do you want to just take us through them so people can hear them? Discussion questions. How does this goal relate to your area within the college? What do you see as your role in helping to implement this goal? What do you anticipate as challenges to, whoop. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> what do you anticipate as challenges to effectively implement this goal besides pushback from some employees? What do you believe are some specific strategies to implement this goal? And what are some ways to hold people accountable to adhering to or implementing this goal? Thank you so much. Okay, so you should all be now. Um, Jackie, we are ready to go into the breakout rooms and we will see you back here in 30 minutes. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I dropped in on every group and there was some great conversation and I was listening and I'm like, oh, I love that idea, we'll take that idea and that idea. So let's share ideas. Um, that you had and feedback. So breakout group one, that was, oh, I didn't write down the names. That was okay. Brenda. Brenda. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I, I was in group one and we had a great group um, who contributed to a great discussion about 
goal five, and I'm, I'm a better listener than speaker, so I will do my best to represent a smattering of what we spoke about, but um, if, if anyone, if I'm missing something, please chime in, group one, I, I would appreciate that. Um, so we were talking about um, hiring decisions, um, needing to reflect um, what, what, whatever community we find ourselves in within the college, being an advocate for, in hiring decisions that reflect diversity. Um, we talked about initiatives in STEM that already exist to recruit students into the fantastic opportunities that exist in the STEM world and getting students of diverse backgrounds um, interested in STEM, even going out to the high schools um, to discuss with students all the potentials uh, that, that are available to them in the STEM field. Um, we talked about various mentoring programs and specifically within um, the teaching area, um, our teacher training, and uh, a partnership that we have with uh, Montgomery County Public Schools to have, to be training um, more um, faculty at the school who are already working in paraprofessional capacities to, to get their teacher training um, for, and, and increasing the amount that students are seeing teachers that look like them and they see themselves reflected into the, in their, their classrooms and their leaders within the school. Um, let me see, I'm looking, I took a bunch of notes. Unfortunately, sometimes I can't read my own writing. Um, oh, we talked about a mentoring program within the Dean's office um, and uh, we talked a little bit about barriers often being time and money, um, that especially in the case of mentorship programs, it can be very time consuming for the faculty to, to be doing whatever their normal job is and then taking on the mentorship of uh, one or more students and that sometimes time and as always funding um, can be a barrier. Thank you so much, Brenda and your group. Dr. Bright, could you, um, who is reporting out for your group? Is it you? <laughs> no. <laughs> and Steen is going to do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, group number two, very interesting dialogue. Uh, the importance we thought of collecting data to provide deeper direction to the work, to the goals that, to that particular goal. Opportunities to inform the community businesses about co-op and community service opportunities, uh, ways of reimagining uh, the, the two-way dynamic between the college and the community, the community and the college as far as internships and the represented, representation on, on different departments, um, community boards in terms of you know, tapping resources of the business community and letting that be one of the ways of leveraging a relationship and to have yeah to have local businesses serve on mc boards we also thought it was important to let the community uh, become more um, deeply aware of the exceptional faculty uh, that is available at montgomery college and the kinds of um, the level of the capacity and what they can bring and offer to to businesses in the community and uh, one of the i thought fizzy who said that if you just can brag about it they continue to believe it and the relationship is strengthened but importantly we thought that we needed to collect data and importantly that let them know what services are available especially the co-op and community service and have that kind of intern, my students being able to intern at your institution and you as a business person in the community serving on my various um, department boards to help bring new life to what we're offering to our students. I think that's about it. If I forgot anything else, I'm sorry. That's fabulous. Thank you so much. Dr. Shihadi, can you take a, um, whoever is the spokesperson for your group, please? Y yes, that would be Patrick. He's coming up. Thank you. Unmute. So um, we discussed uh, the, the challenge associated with minority vendors. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the ways that we see in helping to implement um, uh, 
this goal is through continue outreach to the minority vendor community. Um, we, we do that now, but uh, based on our discussion, we're not reaching all of the minority vendor community. So we want to expand on that so that we touch on some areas that um, uh, we have not in the past. Um, some of the challenges that we felt that we were running to to implement this goal, uh, it, 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 goes, it goes back to uh, effectively reaching out to those owners. So, you know, we may have to go to their place of business mm -hmm. uh, and, and interact with them uh, to get a feel for, um, you know, how, how we can start communicating with them on a regular basis as it relates to procurement opportunities. Um, some of the strategies to implement this goal, uh, and this has to do with, well, this is tied to HR. This is, this is actually, this is tied to hiring, not, not vendors, but hiring. Um, have HR and WDCE develop clear directions for new hires, for external facilitators and presenters. So training units can bring in younger and more diverse consultants and trainers who are not yet able to uh, participate in the solicitation process. Um, mm -hmm. And question number five, uh, in what way can we hold ourselves accountable? So we can, we can, you know, we talked about the disparity study. If there's a program in place subject to the findings in that disparity study, then we can, we can establish uh, requirements for how much contract spend uh, we should make to the minority vendor community. We say 10, 15%. Well, we would be required to reach that, reach that goal. And if we don't, then, then um, there would be some consequences. But to have it as a requirement as, as, um, instead of a goal, which we do now, uh, it would, it would, it would, um, it would help it. Um, oh, sorry. I just wanted to uh, ask my, my, the folks that I talked to if I missed anything. Thank uh, you. Well, I, I, uh, in our discussion, we, we also wanted to, um, address the the idea of you know, we have we have things in place clearly we we have lots of good processes and procedures but i noticed that w in our talk we we uh kind of came up short on where to find these people you know do you go to swap meets do you go to barbershops do you go to churches you, you know where are you going to find these people that are in need of these services and they're completely unaware because nobody's telling them uh, or maybe there's some kind of uh you know, maybe there's a, a reading uh, issue or maybe there is a, you know, a language issue. And who knows what the issue could be. Uh, but we do need to find better ways of, of finding them as, as opposed to waiting for them to come to us. Because I think that many minorities don't have any idea that it doesn't occur to them that they could come to us. So the question still remains in our group. What can we do in addition to the well-established and effective uh, policies and procedures that we have for those who come to us. What can we do in addition? Uh, so I leave it to you all to ponder that. And you're on our committee, so that will be your job to ponder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Patrick, thank you so much for that. And Maurice, and um, Patrick, sure. you know that your name has come up numerous times as one of our contacts. So uh, yes, you'll be on yes. our list of hellos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mitch, your group, who is speaking out for your group four? Oh, you're on mute. That would be me, and they can always chime in. So, um, <laughs> to Maurice's <laughs> question, I'll start off with one of the ideas that the group came up with was looking at alumni to have conversations about how to support minority and women-owned businesses. We also discussed the idea that um, of just really utilizing our provost since they've already been started making some of those connections. Um, Carla Sylvester's name came up, especially with um, her and her team being able to connect with the Ethiopian community and business leaders. Uh, we started taking a look at since with COVID, what are these communities going to look like now or even in the future? 
And then Susan Madden brought up something about um, the planning commission for Silver Spring is welcoming comments on their county page. So that's something that all of us can also um, participate in just making sure that we have a voice about what the county should look like for the years to come and encouraging our students to do so. And then um, Paul Jenkins, I believe, was the one who was mentioning about the bio department is on at the biotech department at Germantown is also connected to the incubator um, by bringing in they bring in guest speakers as well as sometimes the um, folks within the incubator incubator um, sometimes use the equipment they come in to borrow the equipment so that's been their ability to make the connections and then also um, finally just making sure that we are expanding and really. Uh, ramping up our service learning opportunities, especially for students and their opportunity, building those opportunities for students to be able to be connected to the community as well. Um, let me just add one thing. It was clear from uh, what we've heard from um, Margaret and from Susan that a lot is also going on by each of the campus provosts. And we should definitely touch base with them because I feel that's information we really didn't have earlier, and that um, many the many each of the three provosts has their own programs that are reaching out to local businesses, and we should before we should connect with them just to see what they're doing and see if we can help them or they can uh, if they can help us or we can help them. Yeah, and I would I would just add that I uh, and the breakout room where Rose was, Rose was mentioning um, about WDC and how we have a lot of those contacts because we're already doing that. So it's really is, I, I, I see this goal as really bringing us to that one college model that Dr. Pollard has talked about many times. Um, we're doing it on separate entities, but this is for us to you know, that's why it's so lovely today that so many people from so many different areas of the college um, where we can have this goal truly be about the one college model and how we can as an organization truly build on the equity, inclusion and diversity for all the community. Um, this, uh, this was so invaluable. The rich information that you have all provided today is just fabulous and we group um, Subcommittee 5 cannot thank you enough. Um, I, I'll second that. Yeah, really. So in the chat box, you should see um, oh, there, and um, you should see the response. This is for you if you have individual ideas that you would like to share with us that maybe you don't think was captured today. We would really love your feedback. I can't believe how much, in, well, I can because Montgomery College has the best people um, who work here, how much invaluable information we have, but I think there is a lot more rich stuff out there. So please, please um, fill it out and share it and know that our committee will use that information only to enhance the um, path that we're already started to just make it even better. Nancy, um, could you put that form in the chat? I did. Okay. Um, we will add it, uh, Jackie, oh, Carlos, could you add it again? For, I know you've added it about seven times, but could you add it once more for us, please? That would be lovely. Carlos um, has actually left the meeting. Oh, okay, I'll, hold on, let me see if, where's my chat thing? Um, yeah, no, that, that one, no. Kathy Henley, superstar. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. I doubled down, so you're all going to get it. So if you save your chat, you don't have to, you know, copy it now. You can save your chat. Oh, look, I added a new slide. <laughs> Skills I didn't know I had. Um, so we have some upcoming um, equity and inclusion events we wanted to let you know about. Mitch, do you want to take us through what's coming up, please? Okay. Um... Once we, uh, depending on how we all feel on November the 5th, uh, there will be an e and I pop-up. Uh, being a minority faculty intern, reflecting on the MC uh, uh, English and Reading Minority Faculty Internship with Dr. Elizabeth Benton 
and William Martin from 12 noon to 1.30. Um, Friday, November the 6th, First Friday's Books Discussions, How to Be an Anti-Racist. We'll be talking chapters 3 to 5 from 2 to 3.30 p.m. On Veterans Day, there'll be another pop-up on November the 11th. Uh, Where's the Empathy? All Things Post-Election from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. On Tuesday, November the 17th, let's talk. How do we move forward with equity and inclusion after the election? From 12 noon to 1.30. Friday, December 4th, the first Friday book discussion, How to Be an Anti-Racist, looking at chapters 6 to 8 from 2 to 3.30 p.m. And then December the 15th will be Let's Talk, a community conversation from 12 noon to 1.30. Thank you so much. So all of these um, events are listed on the um, Equity and Inclusion website. And of course, they are sent out, um, you know, frequently um, in my MC and Jackie shares as well. And Mitch and I would just, and the whole of Pacey would just like to thank you for engaging in all of the town halls, if you've been able to, or a couple, or this one. And um, when Sharon first joined us, she said this, and words never spoke truer. Creating equitable and inclusive experiences starts with each of us. Advancing social justice, creating a sense of belonging, and addressing systemic inequities. Oh my, it's just, the work we're doing is so important. The bedrocks of our commitment to student success and institutional cultural competency. We can't do this alone. We really can't. The work is so important for not only our community, for our faculty, for our staff, for our students. We thank each and every one of you. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. <laughs> when you're passionate about something, it shows, you know. Or maybe I just need a snack. <laughs> I, I would be uh, remiss <laughs> I if I did. I'd be remiss if I didn't say how much great work Nancy has done. Uh, the PowerPoints and just um, making our subcommittee really come up with really substantive material that we'll be able to share. And it's a group effort. It truly is. But um, but with great leadership. So <laughs> all you. right, all right. <laughs> you all are fabulous. Thank you so much, and thank you to all of you all that stayed with us throughout this period of time. It has just been remarkable. Uh, we've learned so much. I mean, we've been on this journey and Nancy's been with us uh, from the beginning um, for three years. And uh -huh. we've gotten the best advice with the collective minds and, and, and hearts of, of, of all of you all and, and the members of Pacey. So thank you very much again. And we look forward to your continued participation in not only our events, but also realizing the goals outlined in the roadmap. So if you haven't, make sure you definitely look through the roadmap and see where you fit in. As Dr. Pollard uh, said to me once, she said, get in where you fit in. So that is my last party line to all of you all today. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, everybody.